네, 시작하시면 좋겠습니다. 오케이, okay, let's begin. 네, 시작하겠습니다. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Song Jin Park and I'm the TA of the Pretix Week 10. Uh, today we will gonna implement the image to text model, especially show attend and tell. So today we will gonna cover the how to pre-process the image captioning data and how to implement the show attend and tell. And then we will train and evaluate the model. And finally, we will generate captions and visualize attentions with BIM search on the real examples. Uh, before we go, I prepare some essential files for this practice. So please press the button below the download data set here. It takes a few minutes. Yeah, I believe everyone already pressed the button. So meanwhile, in the meanwhile, uh, I'll explain the data set which we'll, we will use today. We will gonna use the Flickr 8K for training and a subset of MS Coco for evaluation. Uh, Flickr 8K is a label data set consisting of 8,000 image photos with five questions for each photos. Uh, it includes images obtained from the Flickr website. Uh, I believe everyone knows the Flickr. It's the social network service, which is mainly focused on sharing the images. Uh, and then the MS Coco is a large scale object detection, segmentation, and captioning data set. Uh, it also contains photos with five captions, but the size of data set is much larger than Flickr 8K. Uh, the training set size is almost the 13 gigabytes, so we will not gonna use MS Coco as the training set. So I bring some example from the MS Coco dataset, and you can see the real examples in the MS Coco example in this link here. And you can see the real sample below. This is the image which the, the orange cat is looking at the television. And in MS Coco, there's our five captions which are which are paired with the image. Uh, for example, the orange cat looks at a television set in a chair or a cat on a wood floor watching a TV sitting on a chair and, and, and et cetera. All right. All right, let's move to the first section. So how to pre-process pre the image caption data? Uh, the section one takes a few minutes to pre-process the data. So we will gonna press this run button before I explain the details, but I found there's are some mistake in my code last night. So I, uh, I want you guys to update the code a little bit. Please add this line at here from SK image, import image as you byte. And, and then you need to update the code here. Image equal resize image 250, 256, 256. And maybe your original code with is with just this line and you must add this image as you byte in front of this resizing function. Is there any question about the this refinement? Ah, 네, 다시 보여드리겠습니다. Can you see it?
Yeah, I will gonna upload the revised version later. Sorry for inconvenience. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, I will show you the pre-processing step again. So you need to revise this line, which is resizing images to the 256 and 256. You need to add this image as a byte function outside of the resize. Uh, uh, permission denied 가 뜨신다고요? 잠시만요. Uh, I think the link is blocked because many people are downloading in the same time. So I will update the ID. Please give me a few minutes. Is there anyone successfully download the data set without the permission denied? Uh, then it was made up. Practice week 10 dot zip. 다음 받으시면 됩니다. Yeah, I think you can download it manually, but uh, all right. Uh, mm. I think the permission denied will be disappear after a few minutes, so please wait a while. 
I will proceed the rest of the practice and you will retry to download the data set. Uh, I'm so sorry for the error. All right, I, I, I think I should move on to the first section. Uh, I'll give you an uh, explanation on how to pre-process the image capturing data. Yeah, yeah, I think you can manually download and up upload to the collab is the best way, maybe. So I proceed to the first section. Okay, we will gonna process the <clears throat> image capturing data. Uh, I believe everyone take the week seven CNN course and week nine RNN course. So uh, everyone will be familiar with how to pre-process the images and text. So for images, we are using a pre-trained encoder. So we would need to pre-process the image to the form the pre-trained encoder can use. And the pixel values must be in the range zero to one. And we must then normalize the image by the mean and standard, standard deviation of the image net images RGB channels. And these values are also written in the torch vision so you should follow this kind of uh, normalization matrix. And we will resize all images to 256 and by 256 for uniformity. Uh, such uniformity is not required, but, but we, need, we want to save all the images in the numpy array format so we match the size of image 256 by 256 and for the text we will tokenize we will tokenize the sentences and add special tokens as you see in the week nine so this is the uh, original sentence and after the pre-processing step, your sentence will become like a start and the talk and token and the rest of the lengths are filled with the padding token. Okay, I, I will skip the some part of the pre-processing step because we are already familiar with such steps. So uh, these codes are just designed to make a pair between the image and text because when you see the Flickr AK and MS Coco, they give a uh, image and text in a separate file and they also give which text and which captions are paired. So you manually pair the image and captions by seeing the index. So this code are doing some pairing job. And then as you done in week nine, you must need to make a vocabulary <clears throat> of the word tokens in your text. And then we save the vocabulary file in JSON format. And then we save our images in the NumPy array format because uh, we can just read images every time when you're doing experiment experiment, but that is 
uh, bit inefficient thing when your image, uh, your uh, number of images are a bit large, like the MS Coco data set because reading images and convert them into the NumPy array is very uh, resource heavy operation and the some bottleneck of your code. So it is convenient to pre-process the older, uh, convert the older images into the NumPy array and then just store the NumPy array into the file is better way to, better way for the large data set. So this step is doing that thing. First, as you can, as you done in week seven, read image and convert the images into the NumPy array and then, <clears throat> we just save the NumPy array to the uh, some HDF file format. You may wonder what is the HDF file? It's, it's originally designed to store a very big NumPy array type data. So it supports efficient IO and the uh, some storage efficient saving files. So I recommend to use HDF file format when you are storing large NumPy array or torch tensors things. Okay, so this is how you save the image in NumPy array. And then we also pre-process the text that convert the sentence into the sequence of the integer index and then the sequence of integer index into the JSON file, which can be simply loaded after the experiment. Yeah. So this is how to pre-process and save your files in the HDF5 HDF5 format and JSON format. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I'll move to the next section. The second is Define the PyTorch dataset class. Uh, I will also briefly explain how to define the captioning image captioning dataset as a kind of PyTorch dataset. Uh, it reads images from the HDF file. <clears throat> And then it also loads the captions and lengths of captions from the JSON file. And then it applies the transform, which is uh, you've seen the above, the normalization step. And then you keep the size of the data set, which is equivalent to the uh, length of captions. Oh. Yeah, there are some questions. Uh, the question from Sojang. 지금 세 종류 데이터를 다 가지고 있는 상태인가요?라고 물어보셨는데, 어, Flickr 30K는 없고. Coco는 서브셋만 있는 상태고 플리커 8K만 제가 풀로 넣어놓은 상태입니다. So we only have Flickr 8K dataset. We we don't have the Coco and Flickr 30K in our some practice week 10 .zip file because Coco and Flickr 30K is uh, the size of 
Coco and Flickr, sorry, K is a bit large, so I cannot contain the files in the practice zip file. And the uh, question from Basir, if length image shape is two, why do we use this? Oh, it's because, it's because the image has these three channels, RGB, but if your images are like a grayscale, there's no RGB channel. So we manually expand the channel size, uh, channel dimension by just copy the grayscale images. So this code is for convert the grayscale image into some RGB-like image tensor. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's let's keep going. And then we define the get item in the data set, which is the <clears throat> which pops the items when you iter the data loader on this data set. So we normalize the data set. It, it lies in zero to one range and we load the caption and caption length thanks caption and caption lengths. Uh, we convert the caption and caption lengths to the torch long tensor format to use it as an input of our model. So that's the everything of caption data set. I will move to the implementation of show, attend, and tell. If you have a, if you have any question, please leave the comment. Okay, we will gonna <clears throat> implement three module. First one is image encoder, and second one is attention network, and third one is the text decoder with attention network. So let's start with the first one. It's the image encoder. So the image encoder encodes the input images with three color channels into a smaller image with learned channels. So we will gonna use encoder as ResNet 101 because the original paper used the BGG16, but <clears throat> BGG16 is a bit heavier. BG16 needs more VRAM compared to ResNet. So we will use ResNet 101 instead of BG16 because our collab has VRAM, VRAM limitation. So I bring the some images compared between VGG and the ResNet. So in this section, um, you load the pre-trained ImageNet ResNet 101 and then read up the top two layers in the model. The original ResNet has global average pooling and some linear layer, which is designed to classify the images, but we want to extract only this feature tensor from ResNet. So we read off the top two layers in the ResNet. So I give you uh, two minutes to implement the code load the ResNet 101 and read of the fully connected and global average filling layer on the ResNet.
All right, I'll show you my own implementation. So you can <clears throat> you can load the pre-trained ResNet model by like this. And the reason I contain the progress first, uh, progress equal first, because if you turn on this option, there's some errors in the Google Collapse. So I make the progress equal false. And then you can read off the top two layer by just get the older layers and then remove from the, lay the list which is the end of two elements in the list. Okay, I believe it's a bit easy. So let's move on to the next part. So we implement, we load the ResNet and then we read off the top two layer and then we define it as the ResNet feature extractor ResNet feature extractor. And then we add some adaptive average pool to the on the uh, ResNet because this allows the input images of variable size. But in our case, we already resize the old images into 256 by 256. So it may be useless, but when you evaluate your code with the uh, uh, evaluate with your code with the uh, variable size of input images, then this adaptive average pool 2D is very helpful to handling the image with the variable size. Okay, I believe everyone already learned this about in week seven, so I'll keep going. So our encoder is very simple, just uh, get the image as an input and pass it through the ResNet and apply the adaptive pulling on the top of the ResNet and then permutate, permutate the tensor in this way to apply some uh, on this output. So this permutation must be in this line. Image encoder or you can fine tune your uh, image encoder, but you fine tune only the high level feature encoder. So I'll give you uh, two minutes to implement the freeze the encoder parameters and unfreeze the higher level feature encoder parameters.
Okay, uh, I just figure out, figure out the solutions are contained in here. So you can freeze your parameters by get the parameters in like self dot lesnet dot parameters in p and p dot required growth first and you can turn on the request growth as the same format like this Okay, this is a bit easy. So let's move on to the uh, attention network. So the attention network estimates the importance of a certain part of an image. It considers, ah, there's a question from Jagun. Ah, why we only fine tune after layer five because the some lower level layers are uh, learn some basic features of the images like some lines and the boundaries of the images so you if you fine tune the low level feature then uh, your network are gonna lose your uh, lose some general generalization power so we only fine tune the high level feature encoder the right. okay i believe this there's no more questions so move to the attention network so the so the net, attention network estimate the importance of a certain part of an image. So it considers the sequence generated thus far and attends to the part of the image that needs to describing next. Here we will use the soap attention where the weights of the pixels add up to one. We will not gonna implement a hard attention in this practice because it needs some RLs and the stuff we did not learn in the class. So we will skip the hard attention. And yeah, so there, so oh, there's a question from Hanil. Uh, 아 그렇게 해도 되지만 그 여기서 먼저 리퀄 그라드를 퍼스를 하고 그 뒤를 이제 리퀄 그라드를 트루로 주는 이유는 어 다섯 번째까지는 아 다섯 번째까지가 아니라 일단 그 논문에서 기본적으로 주장하는 바는 그 피처 인코더는 고정을 하고 가는 거고 만약에 저희가 피처 인코더를 학습을 파인튠을 한다고 디시전을 했을 때 그때는 로우 레벨 피처 대신에 하이 레벨 피처 인코더만 파인튠을 하는 것이므로 우선 모든 파라미터들에 대해서 그 이미지 피처 인코더는 그라디언트를 펄스로 해두고 만약에 저희가 나중에 이미지 피처 인코더를 파인튠을 해야겠다 그 필요성을 느꼈을 때만 이제 하이 레벨 피처 인코더가 그라디언트를 허용할 수 있도록 해주기 위해서 이런 식으로 디자인을 했습니다. 환일님이 말씀하신 대로 하면은 어 일단 모든 그 이미지 피처 인코더가 기본적으로 어 리퀄 그라드가 트루가 돼 있는 상태이기 때문에 어 백프로브를 할때어 모든 파라미터들이 자동으로 다 파인튠이 되는 것이므로 네. 이런 식으로 구현을 하였습니다. 네, 감사합니다. 
So we will implement the attention network here. I give you all the basic building, building blocks here. And you need to fill in the blanks by using the basic building blocks. And you might wonder what is the mathematical equation of the attention network? So I prepared it. Can you see my screen? The equations. Uh, okay, so you need to implement this one by using these building blocks. You may fill in these blocks, which is just equivalent to the uh, this mathematical equation. So I give you uh, three minutes to implement just same as this mathematical equation. Oh, one thing different is we will not gonna use the nonlinearity as tangent, hyperbolic tangent. We will gonna use ReLU as a nonlinearity here. So be aware this part. Okay, I show you my own implementation. So the first part is just same as the, this one. And then the second part, self decoder map to the decoder hidden is just uh, so Jaewon asked the question, uh, what is the effect of the dim equal one in NN dot softmax? Uh, the dim equal one means the, the dimension which the softmax scores are calculated. So we will apply the softmax operation following the dimension one. Yep. Yeah, that's okay. I'll proceed. So these two lines are equivalent to this part. Ah, 
this and this. And then we just following the uh, mathematical equation I've shown you by applying nonlinearity on the, the sum of two mapped features and the apply the fully connected on the that and and then we calculate the softmax following the dimension, uh, following the dimension zero. And then we will apply the attention on the encoder output by just multiplying them. This is just my uh, own implementation. So there are many different form of implementation. So you don't mind your implementation is a bit different from mine. Do you have a question about this? Okay, let me move to the next section. So in the third part, we will implement the text decoder with attention network. Uh, this is just same as you done in the last practice section, uh, session, the sequence to sequence with the decoder attention. So I will skip the details about the decoder RNN, the RNN with the attention network, but I want you to implement the pack padded sequence uh, operation here, which is the one technique to speeding up RNN that by ignoring padding tokens during the recurrence. Uh, PyTorch are already support this, this as a basic function in PyTorch, but I want you to implement manually here. So what does this do is calculate the sequence time by time, but you unload the uh, sequence, entire sequence from the batch when you when your padding token appears in the certain time step. So in this example, at the t equal one, there are no padding tokens in batch. So you calculate the uh, output, uh, hidden and output all of this to all of this example. And at the time step two, you see top four, top four elements are uh, layer word token, but the bottom one is just a padding. So you unload this entire sequence from your batch and you only calculate the hidden and output from the only for these layer word tokens. Okay, so we were gonna implement this pack padded sequence operation here. I give you um, some basic building blocks here, uh, which you already seen seen in the week nine. So I will not gonna explain you what is the embedding matrix and what is the H and C in LSTM cell. So I believe everyone is already familiar with the RNNs. So you will gonna implement the pack paddy sequence uh, operation here, which I explained the above. 
And before we implement this, uh, I need to explain one thing. Yep, here. This line is different from the in week nine because we sort the examples by descending order of the length of text. So originally your text data, text tensors are unordered. Maybe this one is on the first of the batch and this one can be in the second of batch like this. But to do this petty sequence operation, we first uh, sort the text tensors by their uh, lengths of the sentence. So this line do the sorting in descending order. Yeah. And then the remaining of the part is same as the week nine. So I skip the explanation. Your job is to implement the tech petty sequence uh, operation here. So I give you uh, five minutes to implement. If you have any question about basic RNN and CNN, feel free to ask.
Okay, I will show you my own implementation of this. So this part is my own implementation. Uh, I choose to remove the samples from batch by tracking the uh, length of sequence. So batch size T is the batch size in time step T. So in time step T, uh, means the length of sequence we've seen is T and the decode lengths are the lengths of each sample in the text tensor. So if the sample length is larger than the current time step, then we keep that batch. And then, and if the length of the sample is smaller than time step T, then we unload that sample from the batch. So the summation of this is equivalent to the number of the sample, which is, which has longer, which is longer than uh, T. All right, the rest of the part is just equivalent to the RNN with attention in week nine. So we calculate the attention matrix, uh, attention matrix by uh, only on the some subset of the batch, and we get the attention scores. And then we also calculate the RNN features only for the subset of the batch. And then we do the, we pass it to the LSTM, which is the subset of the patch. So the everything's become subset like this and this of your full patch. And then the rest of things are just same as the RNN with attention. So I believe everyone can do this very easily. Okay, let's move to the train and evaluate your model. Uh, in this section, we will train our model and evaluate its performance with the blue four score. Uh, before we go, we set the hyperparameters. Uh, we load the packages which we need to train our model and set all the hyperparameters which you need to pass to your model, like learning rates and batch size and then epoch of your training steps and then etc. So we set the dimension as 552, which is equivalent to the show attendant tell paper. And we apply also half of the drop off chance. All right, in the train, uh, I believe everyone are also familiar how to train your model. So the only thing we need to do is implement the uh, attention regularization co code on the loss calculation. So the attention regularization is equivalent to Ah, here. So you need to increase your attention score matrix like this. So I give you two minutes to implement this in this section.
아, 네. 이 부분을 구현하시면 됩니다. 아, 그 수식, 수식을 보여달라는 말씀이신가요? 아, 이 부분을 말씀하시는 건가요? 아, 네네네. 오, oh, there's a question. What is the lambda value? Uh, you can set that as a you can just set that as a one. It's it's totally fine. Or you can set the lambda as a hyperparameter, and you can define the lambda in here. And maybe this is the equivalent to the lambda in the paper. Okay, I show you the solu my solution. I add the uh, doubly stochastic attention regularization, which is just equivalent to the uh, mathematical equation in the paper. So this is the lambda in the paper, and this is same as the sigma over t time. And we calculate the uh, square of two norm as a regularization. All right, so training is by following. Pass your image to encoder and the image pass it to the, the decoder and it trained with the, uh, in a teacher forcing manner, we, which you learned in week nine. And then we calculate the loss by some ground truth target uh, word. And you add the uh, regularization term and then clear the gradient in the optimizer and backward the loss. And then update your weights. Uh, I believe everyone already known about the clip gradient, uh, you need to uh, set limits on the maximum of gradient because if your RNNs are getting deeper and deeper, then the gradients are accumulated through time and then your gradient flows, the RNN can explode to the very large value and which is very uh, similar to infinite. So you need to limit, you set the maximum on the gradient. So guarantee your gradients are not explode by passing through the time steps in the RNN. Okay, I believe everyone are understand the train code and we will move to the evaluation code. This is just equivalent to 
the train code, but we calculate the blue score here. Blue for with using NLTK library. The NLTK library is very useful natural language processing toolkit. So you can find some tokenizers and the metrics of the sentences in this toolkit. So I recommend to use NLTK or another some NLP libraries such as Spacey or etc. because it's optimized to your CPU and RAM. So your manual implementation of blue scores are a bit slower than using NLTK or some spacey like optimized library. So I I know you already uh, implemented the blue score. So in this part, we just bring the compute metric from the NLTK library. Okay, this is the training and evaluation. Now we need to run Let's run the training and evaluation code here. Uh, I think our GPU is not sufficient, not enough to show you the full training of the models on the Flickr 8K because one epoch takes almost six minutes on your GPU. So you may run the code just one epoch or two epochs and we just show the visualization and generating captions on by using pre-trained models, which I bring, which I bring. So I believe you can already familiar with these kind of calls. So I will skip this step because there is are no time. Okay, let's move to the section four. Let's generate captions and visualize attentions. So the first section is generate captions with BIM search. So the BIM search is you, you in the week nine, you already done the grid decoding, which is the choose the word with the highest score and use it to predict the next word. But this is not the optimal because the rest of sequence are depend on the first word you choose. If your choice is wrong or not the best, then the subsequent sample, sampled words are just a sub, sub optimal sample. So you need to track the all the possible uh, high score samples. So it would be best if we could somehow not decide until we finish it decoding completely and choose the sequence that has highest overall score from a basket of candidate sequences. So this is what BIM search does. And I bring some example photos of the BIM search. Uh, you can see that you choose the top three possible uh, word from the vocabulary and then keep that. And the next time step, you also take into account all the words in vocabulary and take the top three possible sequence in here. And then next step, you also keep the top three sequence with highest score and keep going. And then you can get the almost optimal sequence uh, compared to the greedy decoding one. 
So in this section, we will implement the BIM search decoding scheme. I change to the question format. All right, you don't need to take care of this code because this is just the uh, pre-processing the images and then convert, normalize it and convert it to the NumPy and Torch tensor. So you don't need to take care of these calls. And then we treat the beam search problem as the uh, having a batch size K, which can which keeps the most probable K top K sequences. And you are gonna fill this sequence. Uh, you are gonna update this bet, batch size batch with size K as the following calls. Oh, there's a question from Juanil. Oh. Ah, 그 클립 그라디언트 함수는 제가 이 코드가 너무 길어질 것 같아서 그 다운 받으신 파일 안에 보면은 그 utils.py라는 파일하는 데 제가 따로 구현을 해 놨습니다. 그 클립 그라디언트는 파이토치에서도 기본적으로 구현을 하고 있는 걸로 알고 있고 그래서 따로 뭔가 보여드릴 필요가 없을 것 같아서 utils.py 아 utils.py에 저장을 해놨으므로 네 거기서 찾으시면 될것 같습니다. 우리 set the uh, k-size batch with uh, we initialize the batch with size k with the start token, and then we pack this into the uh, name of sequence, and then we define top k scores, which keeps the scores of the top k sequences and then you are you are gonna decoding step time step by step this is just equivalent to the rnn cell we've seen in section three i oh, know section two so the below is your job to implement the beam search. If I, if you have any question, please feel free to ask me. I will show you a solution on 
Okay, I show you my own implementation. First, we add the top case scores to the score, spec score vector because these score vectors are the probability on a single uh, words and we track the score of entire sentence in this top case course mat matrix. So we add, add top case scores and scores to get the entire score of an entire sentence. And then we start to do some beam search, which is the top K probable uh, sequence. So at the first time step, uh, is there's no the context we've seen before. So we just set the, we just get the first dimension of scores and then do the top K and we get the top K scores and the top K words, which is which equivalent to just pick uh, most probable top K words and set this to our uh, sequence. Uh, keep keep uh, keep this into the beam, and then from time step two, uh, we will gonna choose the words by unroll them in. by unload them and choose the top K. And then these top K scores are uh, multiplication of the vocab size <clears throat> and then top K words, <clears throat> uh, vocab size and the K. So you need to get the index of most probable words and next, uh, most probable words sequence and the uh, word. So you do this by dividing the top K words by vocab size. And this will return among zero num integer among zero to <clears throat> K. And then this will returns the, the indices in the top K words. And then you are just doing the cat, concatenate the context sequence and the most probable next word. And and <clears throat> you also concatenate the alpha on the same manner. And then you check the sentence is already finished when the end token is appear. So you check the next word is end, then you unload the sample from the batch and you uh, keep the sample in the batch if the next word is not the end. And then you keep doing the same thing until the all the sequence meet the end token. So this is the how you implement the beam search on text decoder. Uh, I believe it, this is not, there is a bunch of another possible implementation. So please don't mind your implementation is different from mine. And if you have any question, I will try my best to explain about the beam search code. You can ask via uh, class sum, right? Unfortunately, I cannot show you the visualization and caption generation example, for, uh, caption generation from real example because I received the permission denied to download my 
uh, file. So I will unload the, the solution file and you can run the code and check the code will learn in correct way. So yeah, I will explain the visualization attention and I will finish this practice. So to visualize your attention, we will take the some uh, tricks on visualization. So in, instead of investigating the true impact of attention score on each inf input images, we will use some trick to visualize attention on the input image. This is how we do the tricks to visualize attentions. We first resize image to 14 multiply large n. Large n is the hyperparameter you want to choose by 14 multiply n scale. And then expand our 14 by 14 attention score matrix to the uh, 14 multiply n by 14 multiply n like below. It, we call this as a pyramid expansion. And the expanded attention matrix are acting like a regional mask on the input image. And then you need to do the last, uh, the last thing you need to do is plot image and attention mask in a single image. So below code is the, the implementation of these three steps. So you resize the image by 14 by n, we choose n equals 24 here. And then you do some pyramid expansion and then plot them in a single image. So maybe you run the solution file, you can check the uh, attention scores are correctly attend on the some important objects, which corresponds to the each word token. Uh, you can check the your co model and code run fine uh, correctly in section 4.3. So I prepare some uh, real images from Coco MS Coco dataset. Uh, this is the uh, list of Data, uh, data I prepared. So you put one of the JPG file passed to this and then run. You can check our code run in correct way. Yeah, this is the end of practice. I believe you can check the entire training stage and evaluation stage and some caption generation and and a uh, attention visualization Ah, 성진님, 제가 지금 잠깐 끊겼었는데 혹시 질문에 답해주고 계신가요? 아, 지금 이제 막 답변 드리려고 합니다. 아, 네, 네, 알겠습니다. 아, 네, 그 환일님 질문에 답변을 드리자면 그 원본 논문은 이미지 인코더를 전부 파인튜닝 안 하고 프리즈 시켜놓고 가는 걸로 되어 있기 때문에 어 리카드 그라드 퍼스를 일단 모든 그 이미지 인코더에 대해서 하는 게 맞고요. 여기서 다섯 번째 레이어부터 리컬 그라드 트루로 해주는 거는 이제 만약에 원본 논문처럼 이미지 인코더를 프리즈하고 가는 게 아니라 그 
이미지 인코더도 파인 튜닝을 하는 게 낫다고 판단이 됐을 때그 로우 레벨 피처 인코더는 그대로 놔두고 하이 레벨 피처 인코더는 어, 파인 튜닝을 하기 위해서 어, 다섯 번째부터 리퀘스트 그라드는 트루로 한 것입니다. 그래서 처음부터 다섯 번째 이전 레이어까지만 리퀘스트 그라드 펄스로만 해주면 이미 그 이미지 인코더를 파인 튠 한다는 걸로 네, 결정을 하고 가는 거기 때문에 어, 원본 논문에서 이미지 인코더를 프리즈 하는 거랑은 조금 다른 개념이라 일단은 모든 레이어에 대해서 리퀘스트 그라드는 펄스를 해주는 게 맞다고 생각을 합니다. 네, 다시 보여드리겠습니다. 어 근데 저렇게 하면 어 성진님이 질문 주신 대로 하면은 다섯 번째 이전 레이어만 프리즈를 하고 그뒤 레이어는 프리즈를 안 하는 걸로 보이는데 어네 그렇게 했을 그러니까 어원 저희가 원하는 거는 그 다섯 번째 이전 레이어는 항상 그 리콰이드 그라드를 켜놓는 게 아니라 베이스는 모든 그 피처 인코더에 있는 파라미터들을 프리즈를 해놓고 필요할 때만 그 다섯 번째 이후 레이어에 있는 파라미터들을 리콜 그러드는 트루로 해주기 위해서 이런 식으로 앞에 먼저 모든 파라미터들에 대해서 리콜 그러드는 펄스로 해둔 겁니다. 그러니까 이게 기본이고 그러니까 모든 레즈넷에 있는 파라미터를 프리즈하는 게 기본이고 만약에 필요할 때만 그 다섯 번째 이후 레이어에 있는 거를 켜기 위해서 이 옵션을 넣은 거고요. 아, 이거는 제가 if문을 넣었어야 됐는데 조금 오류가 있네요. 네, 맞습니다. 이건 제가 구현상의 실수를 조금 한... 했습니다. 아, 네, 네, 네. 이제 다른 분들이 헷갈리셨던 이유를 알겠네요. 네. I made some mistake. Uh, I forgot the put. I forgot to put the fine tune uh, phrase in here. If phrase in here. So basically, we freeze the entire parameter of image encoder. But when you turn on the fine tune option. You will gonna uh, allow the gradient flows through the higher level feature encoders in the ResNet. So I forgot this one. I will update the material on the class sum. Sorry for the confusion. Ne, 네, 감사합니다. 네, 혹시 뭐더 질문 없으신가요? Any question? Okay, so uh, 마지막으로 <웃음> 오늘 시간이 없어서 그뭐 파일이 다운이 안 돼가지고 못 보여드린 걸 제가 잠깐 제 스크린 쉐어로 이제 뭐가 나와야 되는지 한번 잠깐 보여드리겠습니다. 아, 성진, 네, 네. 제가 그 화면 공유 대신 할게요. 네. 아, 네. Okay, yeah. So because of the uh, the file down the access. 
Nexus denied all, all that uh, fiasco. We weren't able to see the what we what we were supposed to see in the visual attention. So let me just grab a quick screen. <clears throat> yeah, so this is what is supposed to happen. Uh, so this is actually the uh, end product of what uh, TA's Hongjin uh, did uh, came up with while, while training the visual attention. So uh, this is the image here. There's a dog and, and, and a bike, bicycle. And uh, the caption would be a dog laying on the ground next to a bike. And you can see that when it's time to, when it's the, the time step uh, for predicting the word dog, yeah, the attention is actually given to the dog and laying or, or lying uh, on the floor. So it is, the dog is actually lying and on on the ground. So I guess the ground is like around around the dog and next to. So next to being like next to the dog. So like like the white region is here. A bicycle. So the bicycle is given uh, proper attention here. So you can see that when you actually train your network with the proper Flickr AK and then try to test it on the uh, sub subset of the uh, MS Coco data set, you will be able to see this kind of informative visual attention. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, th thank, uh, thank you to uh, uh, T. Sungjin for conducting the class and uh, I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Thank you.